For those of you that watched my video almost a year ago, I bought a Stiebel Eltron Tempera Trend 15 tankless water heater from Tank the Tank in Hialeah, Florida. And it came with this filter, which is actually cheaper than the Stiebel Eltron one and is probably basically the same thing. But um, they say replace it in six months to a year. And so that's what we're about to do. It's got cartridges inside of it, so you, it comes with this filter wrench, and so you just unscrew it, and then you put in a cartridge, which, by the way, I did not uh, order spare cartridges at the time, so I just ordered these from Tank the Tank. You don't need the whole new plastic filter housing. You just need the um, cartridge replacement pack, which is a three-pack. I also got this. It's for gooing up the seal once we unscrew this just to make sure that the o-ring in there stays uh, nice and um, rubbery let's say and um, also i saw a video that said sometimes it can stick in there when you unscrew so you kind of have to pull it out so we'll see if that happens and so the only other thing is you may remember from the other video that we have two circuit breakers going to the Temper 15 because it has two different um, chambers in there. And so here's on my um, water heater thing here in the circuit box. See how it says EWH? So that was the old tank heater which used a double pole 30. And we can see this newer looking breaker here is another double pole 30. So the Tempera 15 requires two double pole 30 breakers. So that's um, right here. And we're going to turn those off to start just because we're going to drain the water out of the system by running a tap after we turn off the valve here. And we really don't want the heater coming on because could burn up the element. Okay, so this display is no longer on. And let's just run a tap here. Oop, it's already stopped. Okay, so the next thing is to unscrew this guy. Okay, I already loosened this up with the wrench. And now let's see how much water we get. I put this plastic trash can here. Oops. Okay, not too bad. The filter looks like on the right we have the new one, on the left we have the old one. So yeah, definitely looks like we've got some gunk in the old one. Here's what the chamber looks like. I'm just gonna rinse this out. I guess I should use some soapy water, but I don't know if I'm going to buy Okay, so this is clean. I just used my fingers to get the, um, you know, the slime and grit out of there. Next, so we're going to cut the tip off of this, and then uh, I guess I'm just going to try and run a bead around the, um, what do you call that, O-ring thing, or gasket, and um, probably I'll use my finger on it, but um, we'll see how it goes. Okay, I'm cheating a little bit here. In the clip that you just saw, I was about to squirt the grease around the O-ring, but somehow I lost that clip. So I'm all done sewing the clips together, um, <laughs> but I noticed I was missing that part. So in the next clip you're about to see, I'm going to drop in that uh, replacement cartridge. But I took a still here, and if you look closely, you can kind of see the grease is on there. I just wanted to show that. Uh, I just, you know, squirted it out steady and slowly and went around the O-ring and it looked to be pretty consistent. I didn't see any gaps. And so I didn't have to spread it with my finger afterwards and I figured screwing in the housing probably just spreads it out anyway. Okay, I watched another video that said to hand tighten it pretty good and then just use the wrench to give it a, another little cinch. 
Okay, I just um, turned it until it didn't want to move. I didn't really push it too hard. And um, I think that's it. Should be good. Okay, so let's see. What order should we do this? I guess first let's run some water on the hot side. Hmm, I guess, oh, got to turn on the valve. Duh. Okay, so the reason I wanted to start running some hot water first is to just get this tank uh, or the chambers in here, the two chambers, filled with water so that the electrical element isn't running without any water going through there. And you can hear the tap spitting in there, so we're going to wait till all the air gets out. Okay, so I think I'm going to turn the tap off, and let's turn the breakers back on. Oh, one thing you'll notice, when I just turned off this first breaker that was attached to the original water heater, the EWH one over here, the light went off or the display went off on the tankless water heater. But you need to be sure to get both of them because there's two circuits and two chambers. And I guess this first one handles the display. And the second one, well, the first one handles the display and one of the two chambers. The second one handles the other chamber. So just to be sure, you know, when you're draining water out of the system in the earlier step there, you want to make sure both of those breakers are shut off. I mean, just shut off all your 2x30s if you're not sure. Okay, so now we're going to turn back... That's the original breaker that was always there with my old water heater. And here's the new one that looks, you can tell it's kind of new in the bottom right. And we've got power. By the way, I set mine to, I think by default it's 120. But today it was like, I don't know, 48 degrees this morning. And I had plenty of hot water even turning it down to 115. So I think it's better to turn it down a bit um, if you can because it'll uh, save the life of the heating element a little bit. Okay, anyway, enough yapping, let's turn it on. And let's see over here. So that bar at the bottom shows the percent of capacity that the unit is using. So if all the bars were lit up, it would mean that you know both chambers were on full blast. But it looks like we're one bar from full blast on this very cold day. And let's see if we have hot water. We do. And of course we want to check for leaks here. And it seems to be okay. Thanks for watching.